I said there's a role for the ulama and the khatib from the member that the ulama must acquire that political knowledge and insight to understand what is happening in the world today. An alim is supposed to be someone outstanding. Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. Al-ulama warathatu al-anbiya. So the ulama, if they are ulama, must have political knowledge and political insight into what's happening in the world today. And they must stand up on the member and explain to the people. So that as a result of what is taking place on the member, we might be able to save the world of Islam from civil war. And finally, there is a role that every single Muslim must play. Wherever in the world you are, whatever the smallest effort that you can make, do make it to try to prevent that civil war from taking place. Now, let us turn to a more serious part of the subject. We said, but well, that's a strange view, isn't it? that the entire Ummah, all Muslims, without a single exception, were all wrong, all misguided, when they appointed and accepted Abu Bakr Siddiq as Amir al-Mu'mineen and Khalifa. What a strange belief. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who appoints leadership. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam communicated the leadership is restricted to his family. And it commences with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. How do we deal with this doctrinal division now? The Quran tells us, for azatum fi shay'in if you are in a state of division, dissent on a certain matter, then take that matter before Allah and His Messenger for a resolution of the matter. Meaning, take it to the Quran. And only after you have taken it to the Quran. Only then do you take it to the Prophet because the Quran comes first. The Quran is the word of Allah. So we say, in order to resolve or to at least try to resolve this issue, and I know that there are many Shia who will be listening to this lecture, we say it must be taken to the Quran for resolution. And no hadith can be in conflict with the Qur'an. And if there is even the appearance of a conflict between what is in the Qur'an and what is in the hadith, it is the Qur'an which must prevail. What does the Qur'an say? We quote only two verses. It's, not, it's enough. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a command in the Qur'an. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who have faith in Allah. Ati Allah. Obey Allah. Wa ati al rasul And obey the Messenger of Allah. Wa uli al-amri minkum. And obey those in authority from within your own 